And here we are on Tuesday, May 15th. Uh, we're broadcasting live from the Nevada County Tech and Innovation Center in uh, beautiful Nevada City. And we have the pleasure and honor to be uh, speaking with Austin Bennett, who's running for Senate in District 6. So welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm very happy to be here, Mike, and thanks for having me. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm running for the State Senate in District 6, which is really the heart of Sacramento and uh, some of the surrounding areas. There's the population that's about a million. We've got about 500,000 registered voters. And I decided to run because of the direction that this state is, is going in and my concern for my children's future. And so my, my situation uh, as I've mentioned often, has been fine. We live, my wife and I live in, in uh, the first house we bought. It was just my wife and me and five children later. And uh, I've got an office, been in the same area for about 17 years and enjoy my drive back and, and uh, keep my date nights with my wife, family time with children. And so uh, there's really nothing in terms of wealth that I felt that I could achieve more. My, my, my wealth is in my family. and. And, uh, but I've watched the continual erosion of this state and representatives who claim to represent us, but they're not speaking on issues that are so critically important to bring out to the open. And often these are considered to be politically incorrect to, to discuss, or there's elephants in the room you just don't mention. And so I decided I would throw my hat into the ring and I would, I would be a voice for the people. I would run on a platform of transparency and, uh, and speak on things that mattered most for, for the people. And, you know, on the issues, I hadn't decided exactly what issues I would focus on for my platform. And it kind of evolved because as I started to run, things were becoming more apparent to me and even meeting certain activist groups and I started to learn more. And, uh, and we had a situation that truly, uh, it's a crisis. And, you know, really to sum it up, I just don't think that there's anything more important when we're discussing issues than our health. Because without our health, then uh, nothing else matters. So, as you're creating your platform and your campaign, um, I know that you probably have come up against opposition to some of your ideas and insights, but what are some of the main uh, points of your, of your platform and campaign dealing with health and, and in Sacramento County? Right. Well, one of, one of the first groups I met uh, was the group that was exposing really the dangers of vaccines. And uh, I went to the Capitol, I met with a senator at the Capitol and to discuss my candidacy and, and support from the party or the endorsement and and I met a group and that's where it all began for me and I, I started I realized I mean these these people were were getting information out that was so critically important and one of the the questions that came out because we we uh, my wife and I chose to homeschool our children my wife who's a physical therapist uh, we just, you know, decided during that time she, she had the opportunity to stay home and homeschool and we had made a decision not to vaccinate our children. And so that kind of opened up opportunity for dialogue with this group and one of the things that they brought up, you know, is they were inquiring of me because they knew I was a candidate for the state senate was about uh, vaccinating my children if I had. And then there, I remember another question being thrown out, you know, well, well do you think all vaccines are bad? Well. I hadn't researched it so in-depthly. All I knew is, is per studies, we chose not to vaccinate our children. And someone asked me, well, what do you think? Uh, do you think that, that any, any uh, vaccination or any inoculation is a good thing to do? And I said, well, maybe tetanus, you know, as an example. And, uh, you know, that turned out to be the wrong answer also. And so when I started to research the industry, 
I was totally, I mean, I was floored. I mean, the idea that, you know, I'm 53 now, that I had about 12 vaccinations growing up, so about 12 vaccines. Now they want children to have 50 and uh, more than 70, and they're even increasing that now. And so the more I, I focused in on, on what was going, with, going on with pharma in vaccines, uh, that was such a total awakening for me because I realized that our children were being harmed. And I eventually had the opportunity to speak at Houston. It was the Global Vaccine Summit protest and uh, met mothers there, met uh, just, it was an amazing experience whose children were injured from vaccines. And then when I realized it was more prevalent than I ever had noticed before. And just as an example, you know, I, I was speaking to my neighbor, my, my next door neighbor. I'm not talking about across the street, right uh, next door and sharing, speaking to the mother about, you know, the platform and some of the things that I was learning. And she told me that when her three-year-old daughter was vaccinated, that she had lost her personality and developed autism. And so the more I researched, as I said, uh, the more I realized that, that uh, the people are being assaulted. So, of course, vaccinations, and there's a lot of documentaries out, including Vax, that bring some of the uh, uh, information and scientific research to the surface. But in other areas of health, um, for adults and for agriculture, what are some of the other things you found as you've been mounting your campaign? Right, and I'll, I'll touch on that, but just since you mentioned Vax, I have to share that when, when the Vax team, I actually got interviewed by the Vax team, and that really opened up a lot of opportunity for me, it got me a, a lot of exposure, and I appreciated what they're doing. And so, you know, some of the, the things that I've been open about anyway, even using social media, the only thing I've really used social media for the last eight years when my wife signed me up was to disseminate truth, because I saw the things that were going on with uh, the federal government, really the overreach, and just a lot of things that were taking place and uh, even with chemtrails, uh, you know, recognizing the idea that our skies were being sprayed with substances that were dangerous and detrimental to our health. And, you know, it was like one thing, one door, you know, one thing led to another. And I started to, to start to research more and think about more. I, wa I want to go back on, on, you know, the vaccines when when they really started to discuss the idea about mercury. I remember studying, you know, seeing a documentary years ago about the idea that mercury being in our body at all is so harmful. And uh, so having mercury put in our teeth that even before I ran, I had all the mercury removed from my teeth. And so, and so to elaborate, so that opened up the door with, with Monsanto, which I've been critical about before. You know, my, my wife's famous salsa that she makes, the key ingredient is just tomatoes that are organic and normal and, and that are full of flavor. And so, <clears throat> so th those, those became my platform because I, I realized that, that, for example, that Monsanto, which has been stealing our seeds, I knew about before I started running more than two years ago, that Monsanto is bullying our organic farmers and not only bullying our organic farmers, but actually fraudulently taking them to court and winning in court and getting farmers out of business and coercing many farmers to actually basically get in bed with Monsanto and start selling their seeds so they can continue to provide a, to have a, a livelihood. And uh, so even studying the, the area of genetically modified organisms, I came to learn that not only are they not healthy, but, but they are actually detrimental to our health. These seeds are toxic to our systems. And uh, so I couldn't help but start talking about Monsanto. I mean, they're controlling about 80% from what I understand, and it, it looks very compelling, 80% of our, our uh, grocery industry. And uh, so I started to discuss Monsanto and started to expose the dangers of GMOs and really to be a voice for farmers and talk about as a state as a state senator that I would create incentives for for organic farmers to grow responsibly to take care of the soil and uh, to even even use tax incentives uh, because really organic farmers are are the health you know of of this nation 
And so <clears throat> that, of course, led me to the idea as I'm researching more. You know, we grew up with the idea that fluoride was, was good to, to be in our drinking water because it was good for our teeth. Well, that's an, an absolute lie. And, and the more things that opened up, you know, the more aware I became of how we as a people have been lied to. And, and I worked previously, uh, a little more than 20 years ago, I worked as a reporter for a, an NBC affiliate. And even then, you know, I remember that we were very much obligated to our sponsors. And uh, so, so at times, you know, we were expected to take sound bites out of context and, uh, and slant stories. And that's just a reality. And this was more than 20 years ago. And it's why I left the industry. And so, uh, and so Mike, so the, the answer here is the things that are impacting our health. Because right now with what I see that's being sprayed in the sky, you know, I was looking at a preservation act that was written in 2001 that referred to chemtrails. And yet now what I've discovered with opposition is they're trying to convince the people to quit using that term and now steering the people to the term geoengineering which connotes that there's some good purpose for for spraying our skies with these dangerous toxic metals aluminum barium now they're discovering that there's even lithium in it and believe it or not my 10 year old son i don't even ever remember using this term with them but yesterday he was talking about it and he said dad you know, they're, they're putting lithium, I've said to placate society, but my 10-year-old son said it's to make society docile. You know, I was, I was uh, so impressed by him. It, uh, so, uh, the idea is, is that we under, we're, we're truly under assault. Those, that comment is not, is not inflammatory, that statement is not inflammatory, but it is the truth. And so, as someone who's seeking to represent the people, there's nothing that's more important that we stop this assault against our health. You know, some people have told me, well, you know, Austin, quit bringing those things up right now because if you bring those things up right now, people are gonna think that you're crazy, so wait until you get into the government. Well, let me tell you what would happen if that was the strategy, strategy that I took, that when a representative gets into office without the support of the people, that the people don't recognize that that we are under assault and that the representative is speaking the truth, then that representative is going to be ineffective. Because I've, I've spoken about chemtrails to a number of people. I specifically spoke about chemtrails to Senator, to, uh, to one of the senators. And when I brought up the idea that I would speak about controversial topics, and the senator asked me, we were meeting outside, and he said, so what are you going to talk about? What, what controversial topic are you going to talk about? And I said, for example, Kentrell. And the senator said, I don't know what that is, so it's not important. And so that's, that's, that's the situation that we have right now, is that we have representatives right now who are feigning that they don't know what certain things are because they are being coerced, they are being conditioned, or they're being bought to keep their mouths closed. So again, if the people are not rising up behind the representative, then the representative. So I felt that I needed to, to reach that critical mass, that there's an awakening with the people, because when the people wake up, I will come into the government with a big stick, and that big stick is gonna be the people who are standing behind me. And I've said it before, and I'm unabashed about saying it, that when there is a vote in the Senate, when there, when there is a vote in the Senate, that it would be very effective if there was gallows that were lined up outside because if the, our representatives recognize that the people are not gonna tolerate treason, then they will start stop turning their backs on the people and turn their backs on special interests if they feel that kind of pressure. Otherwise, we're going to continue to go down the road that we're going in today. Great. So you spoke a little bit about chemtrails and also how, uh, the difference between chemtrail verbiage and geoengineering. We spoke a little bit uh, about the fluoride, and we also spoke about vaccinations. And uh, could you talk a little bit, because I know one of the big things that affect us up here in this area uh, is the use of uh, 
petroleum-based or industrial agriculture. And it's very easy without looking too far. If you go south of Sacramento, the whole Central Valley is basically a drought-stricken, toxic wasteland of uh, industrial right. agriculture. Fortunately, Sacramento and north of the Delta still has some level of pristineness to the environment. But uh, can you talk about your feelings about the use of some of these uh, more nefarious uh, types of weed killers and pesticides that are being used right. on our agriculture? Right. Once again, uh, this this wonderful corporation that's plagued the world, Monsanto, uh, I'm absolutely against using anything that is harmful to our health. It doesn't make sense. You know, taking shortcuts for the idea for profit is unacceptable. You know, we have to protect our, our, our earth. We have to protect our health. We have to pr protect our systems. And so I, I oppose anything in, in terms of those things that are being used. I can tell you that, that when we shop, that we specifically, that we specifically are shopping organic and and also but even even knowing that we're shopping organic that we're concerned about some of the things that are that are coming down on it so I know that's kind of a long answer Mike but but I can tell you that for my family that we do everything everything possible to avoid getting poisons into our body let me if I can just can just really is that right and you know when you would taste you know the stuff that he was growing it was amazing you know the watermelons that they had there. I mean, they had they had all all kinds of agriculture that was there, and the thing that he shared is it was very difficult, very difficult to to sell because the the you know people don't want to they don't want to spend more for organic products. Growing organic is more difficult because now you've got bugs and things like that that can get into your vegetables. So, so I witnessed it through him that it was it was much more challenging, and so it really it has to be through information and education that once people recognize that it's more expensive to eat unhealthy, that they'll they'll be more willing to spend a little bit more to support organic farmers. But I also feel that this that our government should be supporting, should be creating incentives for, for organic farmers to, to potentially even to, sub, to uh, subsidize, to help them grow organic foods for, uh, you know, for, for the citizens, for we the people. Otherwise, you know, uh, we're going to continue to see that. If people are willing to spend less and not complain about getting pesticides in their food, then, then we're not going to see change. So people need to recognize how toxic and how harmful this stuff is. For that's why you see this this increase with cancer, and we have an, an unhealthy population now. And so, so to answer that question, a long way, pesticides, you know, that are that are harmful to our health, have no business, no business being in agriculture. And one of the interesting things, I'm currently taking a, a practical permaculture class. And contrary, actually, to popular belief, we're actually finding that organic agriculture can be far less expensive because you're not using a lot of the, the chemical-based nutrients. We're not supporting the petroleum industry. And that it just takes simple understanding of the technologies of things like uh, compost, things like mulching. And what they found out in the last uh, couple years is that actually organic farming, when done correctly, is a great way to also do carbon farming from the environment. So I wanted to add that because, um, again, you can look up permaculture online. Uh, there's a great uh, organization I work with called Practical, Practical Permaculture in Rough and Ready, California, uh, with Cathay Fish. But she's been traveling the world for almost 40 years teaching about permaculture. And uh, there's a lot of very simple uh, solutions. But like you said, people need to be educated right. but, and and like your platform has pointed out and this is why I'm so passionate about helping to support you because the cornerstone of your platform is really about the basic right of health yes. and the quality of life right right in permaculture I've never even heard of it but that sounds awesome it, it's amazing they're actually doing things in uh, they're doing desert reforestation and they're also realizing now that through um, 
uh, nutrient-rich soil and different types of top soilings and different types of creating infrastructure that we can do carbon farming to actually pull carbon out of the environment. And not only that, but um, the whole politicizing of water and the drought consciousness in California uh, is really based on a farce of a uh, water use mismanagement and right. how the the dams have actually had an extremely detrimental effect on the Central Valley, which used to be a wetlands, which used to have lots of wildlife, which used to be very fertile, and with the introduction of uh, industrial and petroleum-based agriculture and chemical agriculture, you can see when you drive down Route 5, I mean, they can barely sustain cattle out there um, at this point. So, you know, there's really living examples of how people can see this truth. And I'm not trying to politicize this. We're just trying to give people the information. Oh, and that's one of the things absolutely. I love about your campaign. Um, although these things can be politicized because everything these days is politicized from religion to food to right. whatever it might be. Right. But the fact that you're running on a platform that really puts quality of life and health first and, and right. children first is, is extremely innovative and forward thinking for the traditional political model. So in right. my eyes, right. you're one of the people at the forefront of what's happening on the grassroots level with, with millions of people across the country and around the world and you're representing those people. So I, I want to thank and congratulate you for your, 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 your research, your, your education, your innovation, and the time and effort that you're committing to take, to wear this hat, uh, to get engaged in the political system, to make some, some real change. Because I think real change is going to have to be the grassroots uh, movement meeting the political um, representatives and actually finding sane alternatives. Because what we're doing right now is not working right absolutely and and I'm so Im 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 impressed by you and see this is the thing is is representing the people and being a, a representative of the people you know we're not going to be an expert in every area but you bring you bring the right people together and I can say that I would I would want you to lead a task force that would relate to exactly what what you're talking about here uh, relating to our agriculture you know there's there's different areas that people have focused on and spent so much time on in looking out for the interest of other people and you know what I do is is in my mind I have to let you know that I identify people who are experts in those area that benefits benefits the people and um, and so trusting that I get in you know there's going to be people who I, I want to be part because we do have to get a task force and, and different areas to get that to disseminate the information or to support what you're doing here to get that information out because the more that people are aware of it then that's what's going to empower us and also not to tolerate the injustices and the things that are that has been happening because we have right now a media that is misrepresenting truth or downplaying the harm that a lot of the uh, this stuff that we've just discussed is, is actually doing. They, they minimize it. And some of the arguments absolutely does not make sense. And so... So again, um, you know, c congratulations to you on the already success of your campaign because you are a voice of the people. And um, so I just want to say that we're going to continue to do what we can okay. to bring attention and awareness and support your campaign. As you know, over the last two years of doing the Golden Road TV show uh, and committing my efforts to the Sacramento River watershed, which is all the way from Mount Shasta to Sacramento and out to Davis, all the way up to Lake Tahoe, that this region, um, in collaboration with Sacramento County and the capital, which makes a lot of decisions for California, uh, a lot of people are very optimistic about the positive changes that we can make. And it's really not about Democrat versus Republican Absolutely. versus Independent right. versus Green Party. This is about people's platform and the changes that we need to make to, to really fulfill our destiny as a country, right. as right. people, and the quality of life, and fulfilling the promise that America was founded on. Exactly. Really, uh, the, the, we're, we're being divided. The people are being divided. And I think, just as you're saying, these things wash away those party lines these areas apply to all of us. All of us want to have clean air. All of us want to have clean water. All of us want to have 
uh, healthy food, not want, we need. These are the very things that we need. And so a lot of the, the differences you know, that we have per party line, those wedges are being driven by the establishment to keep us focused on those areas where we, might, where we may have differences, but we have to, to work towards putting those aside. I can tell you that, that my platform has been so controversial because I've been speaking the truth that the registrar in Sacramento County illegally uh, kept me off the ballot. And so through election code violations, with the help of the Sacramento County Superior Court judges, kept my name off the ballot. So that, that's okay like that, actually. Just, you know, when you do that, you're actually shutting it off. It, it gave so, you a okay. choice of storage. Yeah, I just say ignore on that. Just, I'll give you this one. Oh, okay. You'll all have right, it today. Right. Still going. Sorry. It's so, still going. All right, so... Uh, and so what people are, ha are going to have to do is they're going to have to write my name in. And so you've, you've got choices in District 6, and there's going to be a place that says, that says write in, and you just fill out the oval, and you remember to, to do this. It's going to be backwards over there. But write in Austin Bennett. And uh, you don't even actually have to spell it correctly. Get as close as you can, but I had 10 variations that I was able to use. And Mike, I want to add to that sort of on a different on a different area also. But you know what I recognize that even in our court systems, the judicial side of things, the corruption is extraordinarily egregious. And I witnessed that. And the judges who I faced as I was trying to get a writ of mandate, get in, get the registrar ordered to put my name back on the ballot because my name was illegally being kept off the ballot. And what I discovered is that the judges I was facing were appointed by the governors. And think about that. We have governors appointing judges you know, on, on the bench. So the judicial side of things should be completely separate from any powers that the governor has or any influence that the governor has. Otherwise, there's a conflict. There's a conflict of interest. The, the only interest, the interest that the judicial system should be looking out for is the interests of the people. We, the people, this government belongs to the people and we're protected by the Constitution and we're protected by the Republic. And one of the other introductions, the things that I became aware of, was the corruption that's going on in family court, which is extraordinarily egregious. And family court, the court system, the judges in the court, are basically they're taking advantage of spouses, partners, whatever the situation is, and exploiting their financial situation for gain. And uh, the, if, if you ever have the opportunity to watch, and I highly recommend it, now I have not experienced the divorce court or family court system, but I've interviewed enough people to know that we've got a massive problem there, a, 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 uh, an egregious situation where judges and lawyers are not, are not behaving in a way uh, in the interest of jurisprudence. And so I, there's a, a documentary called Divorce Court, C-O-R-P. I highly recommend people to watch that. Divorce Court is an eye-opener. And so that's one of the things that I want to do there also is lead a task force. And I have, I have my eye on, on a couple people who would be excellent to lead that task force, but to audit the, the family court system, which is absolutely, as I said, uh, separating families, taking advantage. And you know how this works, Mike? I have to share with you what they do is they find out you know, what's in the portfolio, what the husband wife, believe it or not, what the husband has and, and what the wife has, and they drive that wedge in between them and by the time it's said and done their assets have been depleted and they're fighting and, and more angry and so the corruption is, is egregious even in that system and so we have corruption everywhere and that's not an inflammatory statement to say that we need to fix things but there are good people there are good citizens who are willing to stand we just need honest and true representatives who will be a voice for the people 
and the people, as I said, need to stand behind. We need to reach that critical mass where all of us, as you said, Green Party, Democrats, Republicans, Independent, no matter what, uh, Libertarian, that we're coming together hand in hand as we the people to take back this state and make this state a beautiful state again, a golden state. California is a beautiful state and it has been being run in the ground. And I really truly mean this when I say that if we specifically hired representatives to destroy this state, they wouldn't have done anything different, any, uh, differently because where the state has gone, our representatives have absolutely abused their offices against the will of the people. And I know that you said these are not inflammatory remarks. I, I think that they are inflammatory only for those who have cognitive dissonance because people will only see what they want to see and whatever they hold as truth, if anything other is said than that truth, then it becomes inflammatory and challenging. But I think now is the time to challenge people's uh, understanding of these different topics that we're talking right. about today and it's time for real change and when you speak about uh, the corruption of the system again I, I thank you for that because even recently they uh, did uh, an investigative report and they found all of the offshore bank accounts of all these world governments and world leaders who had been basically stacking away right. hundreds of millions of dollars in offshore accounts and basically how the politi politicians were robbing the people right. and, it, and it's also a testimony of right. how how does Vladimir Putin become one of the wealthiest people in the world right. because he has his right. hand in every cookie jar right. we I think right. uh, and again I don't want to politicize this video too much but I think we can currently see what's coming out right now even with the current administration with uh, major payoffs and and major um, intervention in different types of mergers with AT&T and various businesses right. it's not it's, it's not politics for profit. Politics is supposed to represent the people. Right. And again, I just acknowledge you for really helping to be the voice of all those people who don't have the right. education, the resources, the tenacity, and the compassion to do what you're right. doing. You know, one of the first things that they do, just if, if, uh, in the process that I learned, is very early on I got a call from someone telling me that they really liked me and, and they told me they were from the same party. And, and for me, it's not a party thing. Okay, we have to run on a party. And maybe some of the things that aligned more for me, I went with that with with that party, and but this person told me they that uh, they wanted to. Uh, they said we need to get ten million dollars into your campaign fund, and then invited me to spend time on their yacht, which I didn't do. But the point I'm making is very, the very first part of everything is they try to to see if you can be bought. That's the very first step. And then when they realize that you can't be bought or you won't be bought, and then that's when the intimidation starts to come or controlled opposition comes in and they try to discredit you. They try to change the narrative. One of the things they've tried to portray me as, I want to share this with you, as being a pharma puppet, that I work for pharma. You know, and, and uh, it's, it's stunning to me some of the things that they will come up with but even more stunning is some of the things that people will still believe and you know refer to cognitive dissonance and but anything that I have said and this is why I tell people that you know that I'm being forthright with you because the things that I'm bringing out into the light are detrimental to my health and and so I am being a voice a voice for the people the things that I'm targeting are the things that I believe that people that I, I'm certain I know that people need to be aware about. You know, people, look, we have problems with taxes. I mean, I, I, I have a, a degree in, in finance, bachelor's of science in finance, and, you know, three professional financial designations and, and, and uh, securities licenses, and, and I haven't focused on the area of finances because, because that is secondary right now to our health. I mean, is this state going broke? Is money being squandered? Absolutely, we're going to address it because that's absolutely happening and really trying to figure out where all the money is going, that is going to be a challenge in itself. But my focus has not even been so much in the area of my expertise, but it's been more so in the area that people need to know about. And that's the idea that there's been mass poisoning going on. And anything that I have spoken about, when I speak about the, the vaccines and I speak about the fluoride in our water and I, I speak about the chemtrails, the aerosol spraying, and Monsanto, the genetically modified organisms with, which are detrimental to our health, 
the science proves it. So there's nothing that I have said, if, if someone wants to consider it inflammatory, what I'm saying is that you, you, there's no way you could have done your due diligence because when you do your due diligence, your eyes will open. And I, I like to believe that that's the type of man I am, that when someone provides evidence for me, and I've shared that before, like when someone comes and says, hey, research 9-11, you know, uh, we know it's being conveyed. I'm not going to go down this path, but whatever's being conveyed in the news, I recommend you research 9/11. And and so I do my due diligence, and that's where I base my conclusion based on science, based on truth. And that's what I ask the people to do because if and I know what I'm saying is true, but if you're not certain about it or you don't want to believe me and you haven't done your due diligence, it's in your interest because what I speak about is in humanity's interest. So you're not a cultivator of fake news or politicized propaganda? If I was, I'd still be in the news industry because I loved it. Right. You know? And it's interesting because they recently found out that uh, there's a news agency whose name escapes me at the moment, but that has bought a couple hundred news stations and they basically print up one script that's used for all the reporters and all the towns and counties and states throughout the country who are all reading that's, the same piece of propaganda to paint the picture and to basically brainwash people and that this is the actual truth. Yeah. So I really appreciate that you are a supporter of investi personal investigative uh, journalism and exploration of truth. And in this day of the internet, people can get online and like I said, do the due diligence and right. find out what, what actually is happening. Right, it's the, through the, the, live, you know, the feed, the live feed, Associated Press. And you get your script. And that's what reporters do. They just, they get their script. Some of the stories, you know, the stories we write. I was writing my stories, but you can get, you can get your story just by getting it from the Associated Press. And often there's pressure to use certain stories, which really is creating the narrative. Because right now, the media has been used as a tool, and believe it or not, by this government. And then the government is being controlled by special interest. And so the idea to run for office for anyone who wants to be a voice for the people, you have to recognize that you're laying your life down for the people. When you choose to speak the truth, you know, your life and situation does come under threat, but I feel that we are in a time of great crisis, and I, I would rather lay my life down and lose my life doing what is in the best interest of this state, of the people, and our children's future, because otherwise, uh, there's not going to be a tomorrow for, for any of us. It's, it, it is that bad, and if anyone does their due diligence, they'll, they'll recognize that what I have just said is absolutely true. Right. Well, if we look all the way through history um, at artists, well, at political people like Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, yeah. uh, who have experienced some of the same uh, right. opposition, if we look at people who are working in, in the arts and music like the John Lennons, the Bob Marleys, who all had yeah. very uh, mysterious right. uh, path. And also, even if we look in the holistic health industry of those people who have actually come up with uh, the root cure and some of the causes of why <laughs> cancer is so prolific and they're mysteriously uh, having their houses broken into, uh, being found dead, having yep. different things. And not only that, but on top of the holistic health industry, uh, going all the way back to Nikolai Tesla, all the people who are working on the innovations of free energy uh, and basically are doing technologies that could put the monopolization of the power grid out of business and actually give power back to the people. Right. And, and we can see small remnants of these technologies like they've allowed solar to, I mean, right now I've heard that actually Nevada, uh, California is about to reach the 50% uh, solar um, solar generation point for the state. But a lot of these technologies have been suppressed, like ma using electromagnetism to create energy. So again, I, for some people who don't want to do due diligence and see the truth, these can be extremely uh, inflammatory remarks, especially coming for someone from running for a political office. But again, I'm here with fascination and full support because um, you are talking about these issues that people don't want to talk about. And, it's, and, and people are trying to run a popularity contest more than a political campaign based on truth and and the welfare of their constituency and the health of people. Right, right. Well, as I said, you know, when I when I brought up when I brought up the idea of, of chemtrails to a senator, and he said, "Well, where are those?" And he said, "I don't know what they are, so they're not important." Think about that. And that's a, a representative. And uh, I spoke to someone who's running for governor and a top contender, and he, you know, I brought up 
that and he said, well, I've, I've heard of them. And, uh, you know, uh, can anything be, so I'm speaking as I would speak as a member of we the people. I, I want representatives to represent me. I want representatives to represent the truth. And the priority goes, as I said, you know, I'm a broken record here, but our health, we must protect our health. And um, because if, if we allow ourselves to be sickened by, by a deliberate, you know, uh, constructed effort by, by it, this establishment, by special interest, then we're never going to be able to, to make the changes that we need to in the future. Today, now is the time that we have to address it. And, uh, and that's if I can put this plug in. That's why I'm asking the people to share my name, to spread my name uh, through social media, to write in Austin Bennett, you know, and it, use this plug here. Write, write in Austin Bennett and fill out in, in black in the oval because right now the other representatives who are running against Richard Pan, uh, they, are, they cannot contend with him and, and they, they, will not, they will not be the voice that we need in this government. Right now we have a, this senator who I'm running against, now he, he is the one who authored SB 277 which makes it mandatory for children to be vaccinated in order to have a public and private education. And the, the constitution of this state, the California constitution, it provides that. There, we, that's a right that belongs to, to every child you know, that is going to school to get a public or a private education without being forced. Without being forced, that's an unconstitutional law. SB 2727, uh, which was written by Richard Pan, and now he also introduced two bills. And believe it, I want to share this with you, Mike, but there's two bills, and one came under SB 18, and then another one came under a Senate resolution. And I want you to hear this because, because both of them are the Children's Bill of Rights. And so why would there be two bills? Think about that. Why would there be two bills that are basically identical? And here's the thing that I noticed, that as SB 18 is going through, the only thing that SB 18 does when you talk about the Children's Bill of Rights, what it does is it gives this state control over our children. Our children already have a Bill of Rights, and that's under the Constitution. They're already protected. There's no reason to add anything in, but it is a ruse by the state of California to gain control over, over our children so that they can come into our homes as an act for the child's Bill of Rights and to decide that if a parent is not vaccinating, that they're not looking out into the interests of their children and then they get CPS involved. And so, and so SB 18, I saw something where the people believed that it's dead. But what people weren't aware of is through the resolution that has much less oversight, the exact same bill is, is dormant right now. It's, it's, it's under the radar screen, so people aren't aware of it. So the point is, is write one, and people think that it's dead, but there's another one that's going through the resolution process, which, as I said, requires much less oversight, and it's, it's a situation that has been used against the people to be able to get laws passed under our noses. And also, Richard Pan has introduced a new bill, and I don't know if you're probably familiar with this, this one, is and I don't remember uh, the numbers to it, but this new bill requires that, that anything that we share on social media has to go through the government's fact checker. And if the government fact checker does not align with what we're talking about, say for example, we're talking about genetically modified seeds not being healthy, if the fact checker that belongs to the government, that's of the government, says that that is not so, we will be breaking the law by sharing it. What this is, this is an infringement against our First Amendment. And what is happening right now is this government is coming against our First Amendment. There was another bill that was working through, as many of you know, and this was the one so that the fire marshals would visit homeschoolers. That violated the Fourth Amendment, the Thirteenth Amendment, and the Fourteenth Amendment. And then we have laws that are being pushed now that violate the Second Amendment. And the thing that people must recognize that if we lose the Constitution, if our amendments are violated, if our republic is destroyed, then everything 
that has made this country wonderful will be gone because we are moving towards a police state and that is the truth and the sooner that people recognize and that we can reach that critical mass the more effective that we're going to be as a people because we'll start working together and again that would be like even supporting representatives who speak the truth we can't allow the media to set the narrative for us we've got to look for ourselves and not yield as mike was saying not yield to cognitive dissonance where where a lot of our beliefs are even self-contradictory but that we do our due diligence it's our responsibility to do our due diligence as citizens otherwise you know uh, our ignorance is going to kill us so i know we could talk for a lot longer but i think uh can we give people information of how they can find out more about your campaign your work your platform and if they'd like to contact you or maybe uh host an event where you could come and speak how could they do that yeah you can you can reach me on my website you can go to my website at bennettforsenate.org and that's b e n n e t t number four senate.org or bennettforcalifornia.com and uh, my email is austin at bennettforsenate.org and if if you if you if you have an event where you want me to come and speak i would be happy to and everything that i'm doing i'm doing i see myself because that's what i am a public servant and i'm here to serve the interest of the people and that has been my commitment when i decided to run two years ago and uh, i have my children's future in mind i have other people's children future in mind and uh, that's my commitment that i will be a voice for the people. I will not yield and uh, I will not be intimidated by, by the government or by representatives there and I don't fall into that category where I want to, to be in the in group and I think that people recognize that, that, that I would rather speak the truth even if I was one out of ten people who were, was speaking the truth and everyone believed that I, that I was not speaking the truth than being a person who conforms at the cost and uh, of the interest of the people. And, it, and it's really fantastic because, uh, of course, on a grassroots level, more and more people are waking up and, and dealing with these topics, coming up with solutions and answers. But I kind of see you that you're really kind of the political canary in the coal mine. You're really the harbinger who's there starting to make the changes. And in some ways, not to compare politically, but there have been people in the past uh, who have run political campaigns who have really tried to uh, be the voice of the people. So again, thank you so much. Uh, so much time and energy and commitment goes into what you're doing. So I really th thank you for that service. And uh, is there any just closing words you'd like to share with people um, before we finish? Could, could, if you would, Mike, would you give your full, your full name and, and title? And I, and I want my friends to know that that trusting that Mike will do this, that I will be interviewing Mike. I want, I want you guys to meet Mike. He's he's a, he's an amazing man, and I I'm privileged to be here. And thank you for having me. But would you just, yeah, just give up? Yeah, my my name is Michael DiMartino, and uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. But uh, I've been a producer for over uh, 35 years, and over the last uh, eight years, after working at the University of California and the University of Massachusetts and uh, doing a lot of events. I have really focused my attention on doing more investigative journalism to bring out a lot of what you've been talking about this afternoon to help educate and empower people with the information and the truth so that we can make the changes. Because I also have children. Uh, one of them is a physician's assistant and uh, actually works in Brooklyn in the emergency ward. And uh, my other daughter works in communications, but I'm also concerned for their health and their safety and for the health of the world because um, it's very typical we say you know God bless America and I'm definitely what I would consider a true American a true patriot but I also like to say God bless the world because the time of the division of uh, people based on race or color or religious beliefs or um, culturalization or age or gender is really um, falling away. So I'm, I'm actually a, a three-year seminarian as an interfaith minister, but I'm just very committed to uh, education and media and trying to help inspire and educate people. Again, continued
uh, support and appreciation. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, be sure to check out our weekly two-hour TV show, Golden Road. Uh, it's a show dedicated to arts, culture, community building, economic development, health, the environment, peace and justice, and science and tech. And also, over the last two years, we've covered over 300 individuals and organizations and businesses throughout the Sacramento River watershed. And we just launched the Source Directory, uh, which is a listing of these people. And it's highly vetted, so you can find people who are actually doing good in the community, and you can find information at www.thesourcedirectory.org. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it.